Oh, everything's over. Oh my god. No. Hello, this is just a friend doing Welcome to two random games. First one here is called There is Nothing Here. It's just. Okay, we're just straight into it. Uh, uh. Okay. I kind of really enjoy this new apartment. It's very clean. It's my room. My wife is first. That's good. Anyway, I'm starting to get a new job tomorrow. Local job. Local arcade. I'm just wanting to let you know how things are working out. Sounds like a TV. Sounds like there's a TV somewhere. Um, I have no reflection. Yay, no reflection. There's a bed. Some nice headphones. Okay. Uh huh. Okay. Just turn it down the my volume a little. Different. This place is quiet. I mean, it's nice. It's a little too quiet. Can you feel paranoid? I feel like something is going on that I'm not aware of. Okay, so it's a game where you have to go back in. Okay, we have choices. Is that a Jason mask? It's a Jason mask. And open now. Uh, why is it open now? That was not open before. They, they made it. Oh, it's different. Oh my, oh, oh hey, claw marks. Ever claw marks, ever, what the f Okay. Friends, that leave the lights up, sparking things changing around not around. What is happening for jungle She's like, I need to explore the vineyard. The Pentagon has been gone for two months, but I'm going to reverse it tomorrow. Okay. It's a handprint. Can go in here? Nope. It is in the bathroom. Oh, everything's so bad. Oh my god, what the f What are you? Find a key. Hi. Uh-huh. Don't have a flashlight or anything. They do nothing. Leave. You cannot leave. I'm not finished. Do not worry. There is nothing here. Oh, and 
I wasn't expecting this much from this game. Sorry if I'm so quiet about this. I am disturbed. No. Oh. Six, six, six. I can just I can just keep going up though. Okay, okay. Generally, oh. all right, then that was there's nothing here. Let's go to the next game. The second game is called Lift Your Spirits. If you hear any loud noise or banging, that's something else going on outside. Alone on a Friday night, and I'm spending it here. My fingers are sluggish, and they typed out the last bit of conclusion needed to finish my paper. I didn't even bother spell checking the resume and dragged the cursor across the, clo the closed document. I tried to submit it. That time I regards Mr. Holtman. Kindly find the attached file I met your student. I think so type my name. Okay. So I'm going to turn on my phone to check the time. 2.53 a.m. The universal experience of losing sleep and getting eye bags is a as a college student came to grace me and its hold once again it seems. At least it's a weekend. During the computer, it suddenly hit me how quiet it was without my fingers tipping away at the keyboard. Everyone else had left. The campus was open 24 7, but who else was dumb enough to push their luck and submit their assignment this late? I consider myself lucky Mr. Holtman gave me the extended deadline, otherwise I'd be screwed. So there were also the rumors. Disembodied voices echoing through the empty rooms. Heavy footsteps shuffling down the halls. Those who were lucky claimed to see a black silhouette skulking around the vending machine at the end of the corridor, staring at them. I'm wasn't the superstitious type, but I had to admit the eerie sound was just of being the only person here gave me the creeps. Thanks for calling over. Okay, I recall the gossip spreading around the same body when a sound name perk up. I glanced around me with the monitor to see if someone would come in. Nobody. I ignored the goosebumps rising on my arms as I gathered up my items into my bag. Scratch this as I know I've done what I came here for. Time to go. As he shambled to the elevator and tapped the buttons, the room was alive, slowly making its way up to my floor. Just a couple more minutes and I'm out of here, I assured myself. I don't know why, but I found myself constantly checking behind me as if expecting someone there. It's always empty every time I look. I tapped the button some more. The hairs on the back of my neck stood as if I was being watched. I clenched my fist, ignored how sweaty they felt in my pockets. 
Was there some behind me? Okay. I jumped. So did I. The door slid open as I released the breath I didn't realize I was holding. I didn't even consider looking back to step inside refusing to turn around to the doors close. The chipper background music they played calmed me down somewhat. I almost had disbelief they were still playing at this hour. Almost. I pressed the button for the ground for the ground floor of the elevator. Just moving with a small jolt. With my finger to I started the number slowly descend. The whole of the elevator was starting to make me sleepy. All the things I could do once I got home just to distract myself with the rest of the ride. In shower for sure, microwave dinner probably. I blinked up at the flickering lights. The elevator shuddered and came to an abrupt halt. The music cut out. I tried the button for the ground floor, then the rest. Unresponsive. Pushing the intercom button gave nothing but static. Uh, hello? No, 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 this can't be happening. Taking a deep breath to compose myself and called out. Is anyone out there? I'm just looking at your help. I started slamming the doors as panic took hold. There had to be someone out there. Help, please, I'm in here. I didn't suffer a good it didn't I didn't suffer a good man getting more and more desperate. I see his world up in my eyes. Why, why now? Why me? I knocked my forehead against the door and the slum pretty to curl up and cry. This sucks. I was about to turn or I felt a chill run up my spine. The air felt heavy. Is this claustrophobia set again? I didn't think I had a fear of closed spaces, unless... No. Mm -mm. No, I don't know. There was a raspy moan from behind me. I turned my head and screamed. Across me was a glaring blotch of darkness, an oozing mass that seemed to melt through the walls. I scrambled away and my back flat against the doors. Oh, a hand emerged from the writhing form, gasping at the edges. Owl smelling black ichor dripping from its fingers. Another arm followed suit, clinging to the other side. I couldn't look away. Ooh. I wasn't expecting the bass. <laughs> I couldn't find my voice to speak, to scream. The face took shape. Ooh, ooh. A pair of hollow eyes and a manic grin with several teeth. They seemed to smile directly at me. I blacked out. Hey, wake up. Hey, hey. I heard a voice panting closer from above me. Why, hello. The person was on the me, visibly worried as I blinked back to consciousness. You're alive? I can really check for a pulse, so anyway, are you alright? I think so. I'm glad Demi scared you back there. It was as a little. I was still in the elevator, but now, with the stranger truly the thumb in front of me, they were taller than me, looming a few good inches past my head. Their limbs looked even more awkward than the vacuum sweater they had. I wasn't sure if they forgot to wash away their makeup or if they just hadn't slept for three days straight. Plus we both. Her eyes were staring at me as well. Their eyes focused on me a little too long as if they'd forgotten how to blink. Um, so, I suddenly remembered the last thing I saw. That creepy shadow from the walls. But before you were here, there was... There was something crawling out of the walls. I, I know it sounds insane, but I swear. It looked straight out of a horror movie. The stranger looked nervous. Crap, they got nuts. Don't look at me like that. No, I believe you for sure. You saw it too? Well, sort of. I'm sorry, I was really trying to be sneaky. That must have been uncomfortable to watch, huh? Come again? What are you saying? Well, I heard you yelling for help and I couldn't just leave you alone, so I did the next best thing I could. Are you saying that was you? Uh, yes, in a way. There's really no easy way to say this. I'm not alive, not the way you are. Did that mean... You mean like a ghost? A strange letter appreciatively? Basically, you must have heard the rumors, right? Well, it's me in the flesh. Well, sans the flesh. How many freaking choices are there? Oh, I'm kind of curious. Stick your hand through them. My hand shot out before I could think twice. What? The tips of my fingers instantly felt airy and ice cold. Like touching something solid, yet not. The stranger yelped and backed away. Hey, don't, don't you just go around sticking your fingers into people you just met? 
I thought, I thought you were messing with me. The stranger was having none of it. Oh, why do I even bother? If you sit tight and don't do anything stupid, they'll come find you in the morning. They shift into a familiar black shapeless entity, melting into a puddle and disappearing through the floor. Exactly the same way they had entered. I found myself alone for the next seven hours. The workers found me half dozing in the corner the next morning. I stayed late most nights on campus to see if the stranger would show up, but it seemed they were ignoring me on purpose. I never saw them again. Bad end one, rude awakening. Huh. Kind of want to check out some of the other endings. What if we didn't do the... What if you go back here to say the believe them? But like this isn't the worst stage of to be meeting a ghost for the first time. The stranger gave me a sigh of relief. Thank you for trusting me. I'd, I'd ask her your name, but I already know that's Dylan. How did you... I've been watching you for a while. Excuse me? Tonight, I've been watching you for a while tonight. It's not safe to be alone this late. I would know. I forgot his name for the, the shrinked. A anyways, I still around to see you write your paper. I don't necessarily agree with your hypothesis, but interesting nonetheless. No. Oh, we got more choices already. Thanks, I think. They gave a shy smile. No problem. This was something I expected my nights ago, but I guess the sooner I accepted it, the better. She probably asked for their name instead of calling them stranger. You know my name, but what about yours? Oh. With heavy fingers poking at their sleeve. I don't remember. I know who I was and what I did when I was alive, but not my name. Strange, isn't it? Have you ever thought of picking one yourself? I was born as if they thought never occurred to them. Nah, I never needed a name, but if I were to have one, I'd always like the way Alma sounds. It's perfect. The smile widened. Thank you, Dylan. Alma went back, twiddling her fingers. We sit in silence for a while, gauging what to see next. I kept glancing back at their hands, wondering if they'd feel as solid as they'd looked. They knew I was sitting, but didn't seem to mind, waiting patiently in front of me. I thought they were only wild from sleep, but proficient and shocked to actually form words past their introductions, to be honest. I started humming softly as if to feel the silence. It's when it hit me. For a ghost, they could easily be a student just like me. I have to ask, how did you, um... Oh, matter knowing look in her eye. Oh, man, it sounds kind of embarrassing. I insist. Despite having no blood flowing through their veins, her cheeks seemed to darken. We don't have to get into it. But I really want to know, please. I... They hesitated before nodding. I promise you won't make fun of me. Promise. Okay. So I was thinking late working on an assignment just like you. No one was around. Even back then, I was known as a loner most of the time. It didn't bother me. While I was working, I got thirsty. No big deal. So I headed over to the vending machine for a drink. They paused, hands shaking. They glanced at the wrist and twisted for continuing. It, it just as odd, not too much to ask, right? I paid for the damn thing, but somehow my hand got stuck in the dispenser. So I pulled and pulled and well. They struggled a bit for I would have been for them to continue. It fell. I felt my whole body being crushed under the weight. I couldn't even cry out for help. And the whole time, my hand was still stuck on that thing. And now that I could even tell, I think my wrist was beyond saving at that point. They sunk into themselves. I died trying to get some cheap soda. How pathetic is that? It's not. I'm sorry it happened to you. I put my hand over theirs. I passed right through, giving a nice cold chill on my fingers. I almost seemed to appreciate it nonetheless. They looked up at me, then her nervous hands finally coming to a stop. I never told anyone about it before. I didn't think it would feel this freeing. Thank you. You know, I think you're a really great person. I want to help you get out of here. I told them I had. How are you going to do that? I can try some things, that is, if you trust me. I don't have... Now, you see, I don't really have a choice here, do I? Trust them. They got their hands excitedly. Okay, here we go. You might want to hold on to something. Before I could ask for the little bitter began to drop. My heart plunged into my throat as weight shifted upwards. Alma, hang on, let me focus. The buns reached the floor, flashed beside me. I closed my eyes shut and decided to trust them. I felt like a roller coaster heading straight to the ground. The air whizzed around me. I gritted my teeth and clenched my hands, knuckles probably white if I bothered to look. And just like that, it stopped. I yelped as the liver jolted and laid it on my ass with a snap. I blinked on myself to see Alma clutching his head away. I looked over to see me on the floor and just sit toward the doors. They creaked up as if manually pulled apart by an unseen force. My jaw dropped as I realized they really did bring me to the ground floor. 
I really did it. I did, I did. I never got to do that before. I couldn't believe my eyes. So they threw my arms around Alma, only to completely pass through them. They yelped and backed away to the wall. Give me a signal before you do that. I don't appreciate feeling hands inside of me. It's gross. I'm sorry. I gathered myself and slipped through the doors, Alma following suit. Sure enough, the lobby was empty, the clock on the wall indicating it was close to 4 a.m. now. Well, I guess this is it. I turned to see them trying hard not to reach for their hands, fingers twitching for two, intertwined with one another. It all happened so fast. I sunk, it sunk in now that I could leave and go home right now if I wanted to. Oh, I think you appreciate it. You know, I understand. Really. I said that for a moment as they looked at me before averting their eyes. They were watching, from, waiting for me to leave. I grabbed some of my phone and sent my pocket and mustered in the courage and asked what I was about to ask. Would you ever want to hang out again? They did a double take. Huh? Why do you want to hang out? Yes. But why do you want to? Why wouldn't I? I like you. Once again, their cheeks darkened despite being them. I, I like you too. Yeah, I'd love to hang out with you. Great. Preferably when I'm, you know, not stuck and helpless in an elevator. My heart skipped to beat as they laughed lightly. Preferably, of course. I'll see you next week. Yes, don't worry about time or place. I can always find you wherever you are in the building. Kind of unsettling, but okay. Stay safe. I waved a hand toward the entrance, pulling my phone out the co out to call for a driver from one of the labs. When I turned to look back, I was already gone. Good ending, too. Friend for life or more. I think that's good enough. We got a bad ending, we got a good ending. Yeah. So yeah, that's two random games. First game was defied my expectations. This one, I honestly didn't know what to expect with this one. I know it's kind of a horror-ish visual novel, but yeah, it was good. Oh no, hope you enjoyed this. And if you did, subscribe, check out the other stuff I've done. See you next time. Bye-bye.